HP's Spectre X360 was one of Engadget's favorite laptops of 2015, so when the company came out with an updated model this fall, I was eager to take a look. Like the original, this new edition was designed with input from Microsoft and has a 360 hinge allowing for four different usage modes. It's available with a 13 or 15 inch screen, but so far I've only gotten to test the smaller one. This time, the 13 inch model is 11% thinner and 13% lighter with a noticeably smaller footprint. The reason it takes up less space, despite having the same screen size, is that HP went with a so-called micro edge display with super narrow bezels. That nearly bezel-less screen allowed HP to cram a 13.3-inch panel into a chassis size normally reserved for smaller screen PCs. Just a heads up though, a thinner design means smaller ports. Specifically, two of the USB ports are now USB Type-C. Don't worry though, HP left one full-size one. They're not monsters. What you won't find, however, are some of the ports offered on last year's device. A full-sized HDMI socket, a mini display port, an SD reader, all gone now. Those tighter dimensions also mean that HP had to retool the keyboard, with the buttons now extending from one edge of the deck to the other. Almost no space goes unused. It mostly works out. The backlit buttons are well-spaced and cushy, but a handful of keys like Control, Function, and the Down Arrow are all super tiny. That can get annoying if you're into keyboard shortcuts. While I mostly enjoy the keyboard though, the trackpad kind of drives me nuts. It's a relatively high friction surface, and a stubborn one too. What's more, it sometimes takes on a mind of its own and does things I don't want it to do, like grab one of my pinned browser tabs and reorder it. Not cool. Also near the keyboard, you'll see a speaker girl stretching across the machine, with two Bang & Olufsen speakers inside, and two more on the laptop's bottom side. The idea there is that you'll get clear sound regardless of what mode you're using the machine in. To its credit, the sound is indeed loud, and the overall quality is decent, at least compared to other laptops. It doesn't rank as the best, though. The audio is still a little too tinny. One thing that hasn't changed? The screen. Same size, same 300 nit brightness, and same Full HD resolution. The only difference is that there's no Quad HD option this year. At least not yet. In any case, the panel we have now offers good contrast and color fidelity, even when you dip the screen forward, which you might have to do if you're working on a plane. The X360 is generally very fast, with PCIe SSDs, up to 16 gigs of RAM, and a Core i5 or i7 processor. Boot up takes just seven seconds, and there's an upgraded webcam supporting window hello facial logins. Setting that up was super fast, and the camera always recognized me, just so long as I wasn't wearing my glasses anyway. As for disk speeds, I got well over a gigabyte per second for read speeds. Writes were more in the 500 megabyte per second range, but that's still good. If anything, my main performance hangups weren't about speed, but about heat and cooling. The new dual fan setup sometimes makes a lot of noise, and it doesn't even work effectively all the time. One time, while I was working on this review, the laptop burned my bare legs, and all I was doing was working in Chrome. That shouldn't be enough to send the machine into a tizzy. The X360 is available now starting at 1050. While I'm not sure this is as well-rounded a machine as the original, its pros still outweigh its cons. Now, if only HP could issue a touchpad fix, and stat.